My name is Lucy Bridgenow, I'm from the National Oceanography Centre in Liverpool and today I'll be giving a short presentation on the finite volume community ocean model, FECOM, and its applications to coastal oceanal modelling. This short talk is designed as an introduction to using unstructured mesh models, in particular FECOM. We will describe model design and approach used and then explain what input data are needed to run the model. As illustrations, two case studies will be presented, one for the UK coast and one for the Bangladesh River Delta. The finite volume community ocean model, FECOM, was developed primarily by researchers at the University of Massachusetts. It's now used by researchers worldwide for coastal and shelf seas applications. It was developed for the estuarine flooding and drying process, but FBCOM has also been upgraded to the spherical coordinate system for large-scale basin and global applications. The model can run in parallel over several compute nodes and is written in Fortran. One of the main benefits of FVCOM is that it uses an unstructured mesh approach rather than a regular structured mesh. This flexible meshing allows better representation of complex coastline, as well as a variable resolution. You can have large triangular elements away from areas of interest, and then increase the resolution by using smaller triangles close to the coast or in areas of complex asymmetry. The advantage of using a variable resolution unstructured model is that you can have this high resolution in areas close to the coast and in shallow water and coarser, larger elements far away. If you were to use the high resolution elements everywhere, it would be computationally much more intense and your model would be slower to run. This example just shows a zoom in of the UK continental shelf where we have high resolution in the complex Scottish bathymetry, but then coarse uh, triangles further away. This second example shows the map of the Bangladesh coast, where a complex river delta at the mouth of the Ganges enters the northern Indian Ocean. These figures show an example mesh coloured by element size, where the coarse elements are in red and the finer elements are in blue. The coarse grid cells offshore and in deeper water are computationally quick, but the high resolution smaller elements used to map the complex river channels are high resolution, down to a few tens of metres in places. In the right-hand picture, you can see a zoomed-in section of the delta where you can see the complex river channels with very small elements that are needed to capture this complex bathymetry and coastline. In order to run FVCOM, you need a certain amount of input data to begin with. First of all, you need a good idea of the position of the coastline and also bathymetry. A good bathymetry data set is the GEBCO, which can be found for free online. In order to force the model, you also need some surface inputs. This is the, the winds, the pressure, met data, also things like surface heat flux and evaporation and precipitation. You can force an open boundary of the model with currents and water level. The currents can either be 3D or depth averaged. You can also add river inputs to the model at multiple points along the shoreline. Finally, tidal forcing can be applied either as a time series of water level or a series of harmonic constituents. The FVCOM model was used recently in a project called ESPA Deltas. ESPA stands for Ecosystem Services for Poverty Alleviation. The unstructured model of the Bangladesh Delta we saw earlier was used to investigate how changing climate and sea level rise combined with future river flows would affect future sea levels and salinity on the Delta. For the Bangladesh case study, the unstructured FECOM mesh was nested into a coastal ocean model called GCOMS. There we got the ocean boundary forcing. This was a series of tides, uh, current velocities, temperature and salinity. The model was also forced at the inland boundary by an embedded river model so that we could look at future river flows in the delta. The delta model was used to project future salinity and that salinity in turn was used to drive an agriculture model. Increased salinity in the river has an effect on the cropping as they use the river water together with groundwater to irrigate rice crops. In the future, increased salinity, particularly in the southwest of Bangladesh, is projected to decrease the yield of the rice that they grow every day.
This movie shows the changing surface salinity over a few weeks with the salt water of above 15 PSU in yellow and the fresh river water in dark blue. You can see that the tidal front moves in and out on a 12.4 hour uh, M2 cycle. And as we get towards the end of the simulation, the freshwater has come down the Ganges. So you see the freshwater plume growing and growing offshore. The second example comes from a project called EcoWatt 2050. This is based around the renewable energy sector in the UK, particularly around Scotland. The idea of this project was to investigate how adding offshore renewables such as tidal energy extraction would affect the tides and the currents around the UK shelf. Funded by EPSRC, this project was interested in seeing how marine energy devices might affect animals, habitats and coastal sites around northwest Scotland. The map on the right shows possible locations of marine renewables. These are areas of large tidal range and fast tidal currents. This movie shows the fast tidal currents that move through the Pentland Firth in northwest Scotland. The left hand picture shows the current speed and velocity vectors. And the right hand picture shows how these would change if tidal energy devices were inserted into the Pentland Firth. Though the tidal turbines were only installed locally, they can impact on the current and the tides on the large scale. This figure shows the mean spring tidal range on the left and how inserting energy devices can change that tidal range. You can see by taking energy out of the system, we can alter the tidal range, increasing it in places, but also causing a reduction in the tidal range all the way down the northeast coast of the UK. This can be as large as two to four centimetres in places. FECOM is just one example of the flexible triangular meshes that are being used more and more for coastal applications. By having this triangular unstructured mesh approach, you can resolve complex coastline and shallow bathymetry, as well as seeing large um, shelf-wide far field effects. As long as you've got good coastline, bathymetry and forcing, you can run an excellent coastal model with FECOM. And we've been shown to use it successfully in a range of projects, including local energy extraction and future climate projections. If you'd like to find out more about the FECOM model, the details have been published by Chen et al. And our Bangladesh Delta has also been published. There's a growing community of UK users of FECOM and worldwide, and there are shared scripts available for pre and post processing the model using both MATLAB and Python. If you'd like to find out more, take a look at the GitHub repositories where you can download and share your code for free.